Hey, uh, don't tell anybody, but we're not working on a square body today. We're working on my 2012 Duramax. Now the whole idea behind this video is I know that like me not everybody owns just square bodies. I have other vehicles that I drive. I've got this 2012 Duramax. My wife has got a 2005 Tahoe. Uh, of course they're all GM products. Uh, but I just want to have a video of working on some other junk. So hopefully you'll enjoy this. I've I'll kind of show you some of the things that I do in the shop to keep stuff organized and uh, you know maybe if somebody else has got a Duramax and not sure about how to change glow plugs you'll figure it out or I'll help you figure it out or you'll be completely lost when you get done watching this I don't know I'm gonna check my codes right now which I already have it's the whole reason I'm doing this uh, I already know what the code is uh, I'll show you real quick Got it plugged into my OBD2 port down there. This is just my little programmer for the for tuning. But it also does uh, some diagnostics also. Uh, display all diagnostic trouble codes. And it's, I'm not sure if you can see, it's ECM uh, P0671, which 671 is glow plug number one. Uh, if it was 672, it would be glow plug on number two cylinder, and so on and so forth. So, we'll, uh, I'll show you how to switch out the change out of glow plug on these Duramaxes. Now, the first thing you really need to do is Disconnect batteries, which I'm horrible about not doing that when I work on stuff. But since, uh, since I'm doing a video trying to show how to, I probably better do it right. All right, now I've got the batteries unhooked like a good boy. I know what the problem is, obviously. Uh, got it jacked up. It's securely set on a jack stand. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing everything right this time. Because I'm on camera and people are watching. First thing to do is start by taking off the wheel. inner fender which I've got these fender flares on there I have to take them off first it's gonna be kind of a pain in the butt if you don't have those it's a little bit easier uh, there's just a few clips and a couple screws just for the inner fender once you get the tire off
guy, as you can see, we got more room to work. I gotta figure out how I got these fender flares in there. You know, mud flappies. I'm gonna take a moment to uh, tell you guys about a little tip I've got for uh, when you're working on stuff. The more organized you are, the better, the more fun you're gonna have. Cause you don't have to be looking for stuff. Of course, one thing is keep your tools organized. But the other thing is, is go get some, uh, just some plastic tubs from Walmart. These are like 97 cents a piece or a dollar a piece, something like that. Or you get like a stack of five of them. They're come with a lid. And really, really handy to keep uh, parts in, tools in when you're working on stuff. Now, for years, I've done the old find a cardboard box, stick stuff in, but then you lose little screws underneath the flaps of the cardboard box. and if you're storing a cardboard box for a while, then the bottom rots out of it or a mouse chews through it and you lose parts, blah, blah, blah. I've got these things literally everywhere in my shop. Uh, either just parts storage or whatever. They're really handy. Uh, you can you know write on them what you got in there. But when you're working on a project like this, you know, I've got all my lug nuts in there now. I'm going to put all my screws, all my fasteners in there. Everything that I do with this project is going to go in this box. That way, if for some reason I'm in the middle of this project, I got to go do something else, uh, and it's going to be you know, a few hours or a week or a month or a year before I get back to it, all my stuff is going to be in this, in this tub. Uh, just something to help you keep organized whenever you're working on stuff. It's, it's very worthwhile investment to get a few tubs like this because they're easy to clean, easy to keep track of. Now I'm going to continue taking out the inner fender. I would have washed this thing. I got cow manure all over this from hauling cows, doing farm work. You know, the big seven, well, I got six cows, a big ranch.
now that I've got the uh, fender flare out of the way, inner fender is out of the way, got a pile of garbage here. You got easy access to all your glow plugs. Uh, and your glow plugs are lo located, there's number one, three, five, seven. Now, any of you that are familiar with most of GM's, well, all the GM's firing order or cylinder orientation, I guess you could call it, is for years and years on small block, big block Chevys, the, the passenger side bank that we're looking at right now is all of your even numbers. So it would be two, four, six, eight. On the Durham axis, it's one, three, five, seven. It's a uh, something for me to get used to because I'm used to working on the older V8s. So here we go. I'll show you what to do. First thing we're gonna do is yeah, take off this little 10 millimeter. Uh, no, it's not 10 millimeter. It's eight millimeter nut that holds your wire on and then the uh, the actual uh, glow plug is a 10 millimeter so hopefully I can get the camera at a good angle where you guys can see what I'm doing uh, I'll be using an extension get in there to the Nut that holds the wire on. Get the wire out of the way. Move my light a little bit. Kind of see what's more of what's going on, maybe. Just put my nut, my handy dandy clear box down here to keep it organized so I don't lose it. I will grab my 10 millimeter socket and drop it down where I can't find it. I found it. And I was wrong. It's a 12. I'll leave that on the floor. Alright, so it's a 12 millimeter, not 10 millimeter. Now, I have actually replaced these glow plugs before, and when I put them in, I put a little bit of anti-seize just on the threads so they wouldn't get stuck. So hopefully it comes out easily. Now, if you're doing this, and this is the first time the glow plugs have ever been touched, be very, very, very careful because they can snap off inside the head. Okay, it broke loose. We're golden. Let me get my fat paws in there. Boom. Okay, here's my old one. You can see how it's kind of got a bunch of deposits on it. Not sure what that's from. Oh. 
there's my new one all nice and clean I prefer to run AC Delco's and you know, the new ones even come with the nut so you don't even have to worry about keeping track of the nut I'm gonna put a little anise on these threads so it comes out nice and easy next time I have to change them it seems like about every every year every other year I have to replace these things for some reason or another now obviously installation is pretty much just reverse uh, removal slide it in there thread it in by hand and tighten it up. Now you don't want to get these super tight. They're not lug nuts or nothing. There you go. And that's it. Just a little snug tighting on it. Put the wire nut, the nut that holds the wire on. I would call it a wire nut. I don't know what you would call it. Install it. Make sure it's getting tight. And you're done. Got everything back together now. The inner fender back in, the fender flare on, the mud flap back on, the wheel back on. And I've started up, verified there's no more trouble coat. So I think we're all done here. I need to have somebody write my lines for me. Yeah.